Good day to everyone. This day, the talk on probability of mutually exclusive events. To start with, let us again define the front learning objectives that each of you must be able to attain by the end of this lesson. You should be able to describe mutually exclusive events in probability, solve problems involving probability of mutually exclusive events. Make sure to have with you these materials and equipment as we go along especially a piece of paper and a ball pen to carry on as we go along with our discussion as we show the solution. Now, cite a situation where two events are said to be mutually exclusive. How do you know that an event is mutually exclusive? Now, uh, mutually exclusive events are events which cannot occur at the same time. Suppose that in a gathering, there are these groups of individuals, a Democrats, Republicans, and Independent. Now from this example, a person can, can either be Democrat, Independent, or Republicans, but they cannot be both. So since a person cannot be Democrat at the same time are Republican or Independent refer to this as mutually exclusive events. So they cannot occur at the same time because one has either to choose either Democrat, Demo uh, Republican, or an Independent. So if a person is elected, what is the probability that a person is Democrat or Independent? So let us consider, to give you an idea of what mutual exclusive events are, let us try to consider a ball which is taken at random from, from, from a box containing with the four red balls, not of that, we have four red balls, five black balls, and eight blue balls. What is the probability of drawing a red or a black ball? So for example, we have this illustration. So it contains four red balls, five black balls, and eight red, uh, red balls. So how do we solve for the probability of drawing a black or a red ball? So to do this, let us again define our number of elements in our, in our sample space. In our sample space, how many balls do we have? We have four plus five plus Eight, which will give us 15. So the number of elements or that number of elements in our sample space is actually 17. Sorry for the earlier. Is there actually 17? So what is the probability of getting a red ball? So again, since our number of elements in our sample space is 17, and then out of 17, four of them are red, therefore the probability of getting a red ball is 4 over 17 because again there are 4 red balls. What about getting a black ball? What is the probability of getting a black ball? So in that case, since there are 5 black balls, I mean to say the probability of getting a black ball is 5 over 17. So what is now the probability of getting a red or a black ball? So in this illustration, or in this, as in this solution, this presented as 4 over 17 plus 5, 5 over 17 is equal to 9 over 17. Thus, the probability of getting a red or black ball is 9 over 17. So in short, if two events A and B are mutually exclusive, then it is solved using the formula below. That is... The probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B since the events A and B are mutually exclusive events. So we, just has, we are just going to add the probability that A event will occur and the probability that B event will occur. So for example, we have heard this is sample number one. A box still contains six red balls, eight white balls, and nine black balls. So nine, eight, 
axis. So, the question is, what is the probability of getting a white or a black ball on a single draw? I want you to try solving this problem and after which I'm going to show you the solution. Do you now have with you the answer for this problem? Let us try to compare the solution which I will need to present in this slide. So again, the number of elements in our sample space is 23, since there are 23 balls in the box. And then the probability of getting a white ball out of 23 balls is 8 over 23, since again there are 8 white balls. And the probability of getting a black ball in a, sing a, black ball in a single draw is 9 over 23, since, since there are 9 black balls. So the probability of getting a white or a black ball is given by the solution. 8 over 23 plus 9 over 23 is equal to 17 over 23. So this is now our final answer. This is the probability of getting a, a white or a black ball. So take note class that we are just going to add that the probability of the two events. Since these two events are mutually exclusive. Example number two. If a single card is drawn from a standard deck of playing cards, what is the probability of getting an ace, a five, or a face card? Okay. I want you to try solving this problem and after which I'm going to show you the solution for this problem. So do you now have with you the answer for this problem? So let us compare your answers to the answer that I'm going to present. So in a standard deck of playing cards, there are 52 cards. Thus, the number of elements in our sample space is 52. And then the probability of getting an ace card is 4 over 52, since there are 4 ace cards in a standard deck of playing cards. And then the probability of getting a 5 card out of standard deck of 52 cards is 4 over 52. Because again, there are 4 5 cards in a standard deck of playing cards. And then the probability of getting an ace card is 12 over 52. Because of, in a standard deck of 52 cards, 12 of them are face cards. Which are the uh, king, queen, and so on. So, so that is, these are what we call a face card. And then the probability of getting an ace, 5, or a face card is given by the formula. The probability of ace of drawing an ace card plus the probability of drawing a 5 card plus the probability of getting a face card is equal to 4 over 52 plus 4 over 52 plus 12 over 52 is equal to 20 over 52. But then again, we have to reduce this into lowest term which is equal to 5 over 13. So this is now our final answer. Questions so far or clarifications? Okay, example number three. A community of seven people is to be selected from a group of eight men and ten women. So again, we are going to create a community of seven people from a group of eight men and ten women. Then what is the probability that the committee will have at least four men? So at least, so that is the minimum number of men should be four. Since the minimum number of men is four, therefore it could be five, six, or all of them are men. So what is the probability that you will have at least four men? So I want you to try solving this problem. And after which, I'm going to show you, to show you the solution and how to solve this problem. <coughs> Do you now have with you a solution for this problem? So let me show you the answer for this problem and try to compare whether you have the same answer as what I'm going to present to you in this slide. So to do this, uh, you are going to find the probability of at least four men 
That means you are going to add all the probability of events showing four men, five men, six men, or, or all of them are men. So let us start uh, determining the probability of getting four men. Okay, so that is, out of eight men, we are going to select four. That is, combination of eight taken four at a time. And then, since we are going to form a committee of seven, we are going to select uh, three women out of ten. So that is, times combination of ten taken three at a time. And then the total number of elements in our sample space will be, so there are eight ten uh, people, and out of eight ten, we are going to select seven of them. So that means combination of seven taken, uh, combination of eight ten taken seven at a time. So that is combination of, of 8 taken 4 at a time is 70. And combination of 10 taken 3 at a time is 120. And combination of 8 10 taken 7 at a time is 31,824. Thus, our answer here is 8,400 8, over 31,824. Okay, so that is the probability of getting 4 men and 3 women. So next is... How about if we have five men? If we have five men, we are going to select two women. So that is combination of eight taken five at a time times combination of ten taken two at a time divided by combination of eighteen taken seven at a time. Thus, it will give us 280 over 31,824. That's the probability of getting uh, five men and two women. This time, we are going to compute the probability of having six men and one woman. So that is probability, or that is combination of eight taken six at a time times combination of ten taken one at a time divided over, uh, over combination of eight ten taken seven at a time. That is equal to 31,824. That is equal to 20, 280. So this is now our answer to the probability of having six men and one woman. And then finally, we are going to compute the probability of having all of them are men. That is, uh, okay, that is combination of eight taken seven at a time times ten combination of zero since we are, gonna, since we are not going to get uh, from the male, from, from the from the women, and over combination of eight and seven, uh, eight ten taken seven at a time. So combination of eight taken seven at a time is eight, and combination of ten taken zero is one. Thus, we have here eight over thirty one thousand eight hundred twenty four. And then finally, we are going to add all those probabilities. That is, uh, eight thousand eight thousand four hundred over thirty one thousand eight hundred twenty four plus 2,520 over 31,824 plus 280 over 31,824 and then finally 8 plus 8 over 31,824 and then by simplifying it is equal to 11,208 over 31,824 and then by simplifying this fraction it will give us 167 over 1326 so this is now our final answer. Questions so far or clarifications? So text of the problem it states that at least four men. So we can have the probability of having five men, six men, and all of them are men. And then take note that we are also going to select from the women. So if we have four men, so there shall be three women. If we have five men, there shall be two women. If we have six men, then we have one woman then if we have seven men then all of them were we are we are not going to get anyone from the woman questions so far or clarifications okay what about problem number uh, we have heard this statement if two events a and b are not mutually exclusive events so there exists I mean to say if they are not mutually exclusive events, it means to say that there exists an event in A which are also part of event B. 
or they can co-occur. So if events A and B are not mutually exclusive, then the probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersection B. So what are those events which can be found? Uh, what, what are those events in set B which can be found in event A? So that, that is your event to subtract. So for example, a card is drawn from a standard deck of 52 cards. What is the probability that the card is a red or a face card? Diba, when you are going to take a look on our standard deck of 52 cards, there are only two colors, either red or black. So, half of the cards are red and then half of the cards are also black. And then, a face card could also be a black or a red card. Hence, a face card can be a red face card. So, there is a, this situation calls for non-mutually exclusive events. So they are not mutually exclusive events because a face card can be at the same time a red card. So we are going to apply the solution as what is presented in the previous slide. So what is the probability that you will get a red card plus the probability of getting a face card minus the probability of A intersection B. I want you to try answering this problem then after which, I'm going to show you the solution. Do you now have with you the answer? So let me show you the solution for this problem. So that is, the probability of getting a red card is 26 over 52 because half the cards are again red. So there are 26 red cards. And then the probability of getting a face card is 12 over 52 because... There are 12 face cards. And then from here, the probability of having a red face card or the intersection of red and a face card. So there are six red face cards. So this is now the intersection of A and B. So there are six red face cards. So from here, we can now substitute our formula. The, prob the probability of getting a red card the plus the probability of getting a face card minus the probability of getting a red face card. So that is 26 over 52 plus 12 over 52 minus 6 over 52 is equal to 32 over 52. But then again, we have to simplify it to the loose term, which will give us a value of 8 over 13. So questions so far or clarifications? Just take note of the events. If two events can simultaneously occur, try to use the, that, that formula that we have presented earlier. You are, you are going to subtract the intersection of the events A and B. Then we have also another statement. For any event A, the, prob the probability of happening of A happening, which is the probability of A plus the probability of A not happening is equal to 1. So basically, that is equal to 100%. Therefore, we have the probability of A not happening plus the probability of A happening is equal to 1, or the probability of A is equal to 1 minus the probability of A prime. For example, we have heard this problem. Okay, If 6 coins were flipped, what is the probability of getting at least one head so there you have six coins since i have really shown you the answer so let me just explain this so there are six coins which are flipped so and each coin can fall into different ways therefore our number of elements in our sample space is two ways to the power of six because again each coin can land into different ways and there are six of them so that is two ways to the power of six is equal to 64 and then to compute for the probability of getting at least one head it is just 
equal to 1 minus the probability in which it will not show a head at all. So, all of them will show a tail. So, that is uh, T, 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 T. So, there are six tails. So, all of this uh, output or all of the outcomes will show a tail. So, that, that is only 1 over 64. So, that is 1 minus 1 over 64. And that is equal to 63 over 64. So that's how you are going to compute. So instead of uh, trying to identify uh, having one head, two heads, three heads, and all of them shows a head, you can just use this formula. 1 minus the probability of no head, and that is equal to 1 over 64. So your solution is much shorter. Questions so far or clarifications? So we have here an alternative solution. So if you want to do it the other way around, if you are not, comfort if you are not comfortable in using the formula that is just one minus the probability of showing new head, you can have this solution. So again, our number of elements of sample space is 64. The probability of showing one head out of six cones is combination of six taken one at a time, it will show one head that is equal to 6 over 64. Okay? And then the, the probability of getting two heads out of six coins is combination of six taken two at a time is equal to 15 over 64. And then the probability of showing three heads out of six coins is combination of six taken three at a time is equal to 20 over 64. And then the probability of getting four heads out of six coins is equal to 15 over 64. And then the probability of getting five heads out of six coins flip is 6 over 54. And then the probability of getting six heads at all with no tail is equal to 1 over 64. Thus, when you are going to add all of this probability, it is equal to 63 over 64, but then your solution might be so long. So I would encourage you to try to use the formula that we have presented earlier. The, the, the probability of event A happening plus the probability of event A not happening is equal to 1. Other problems we have. Three six-sided dice were rolled. What is the probability? That is one die came up as a 2. So one of the die will show a 2. At least one die will show a 2. That is what is meant by, the, by this example. Would you like to try to answer this problem? Okay, so do you know how we do the solution for this problem? Okay, let me show you the answer for this problem as I'm going to go around its solution. So in this um, example, since we have here uh, three six-sided dice were rolled, and then since this is a die, it can land in six different ways. And then since there were three of them, so our number of elements now, our sample space will be six raised to the power of three because again, each die can land in three different, I can it can land in six different ways since there it has six sides. Therefore, our sample space is, number of elements in our sample space is 6 raised to the power of 3. And thus, it will give us the answer of 216. And then, the probability of, show, of having at least one die to show a 2 is 1 minus the probability in which none of the dice will show a 2. So what is the probability that none of the die will show a 2? So it is 5 over 6. So uh, the, the, the probability in which a die will show that that a die that, that a die will not show a 2 is 5 over 6. So that is cancel cancel out remove 2 from the size that is there are only 5 over 6. And then since there were 3 of them, 
it will be 1 minus 5 over 6 times 5 over 6 times 5 over 6. And it will give us 1 minus 125 over 216. And then to simplify, it is now equal to 91 over 216. So your solution is quite a uh, shorter because you, you only have to determine the probability in which a die will that none of the die will show at 2 and then, multip, uh, and then multip, uh, multiply that into 3 because there were 3 of them. That is equal to 91 over 216. But if you want to try having this alternative solution, you can also do using this form a solution that I'm going to show. So we are going to compute the probability to show a uh, 1 die will show at 2, 2, 2 dice will show at 2, and then all of them will show at 2. And this at least one die will show a two. This one die to show a two is one over six. That is the first die. This is your first die. Will show a two. The probability is uh, one die. That is the probability is one over six. And then five over six. Five over six for the rest. Okay. It will show two. So the other must. Uh, so two. That is one over six because. Uh, the first die will show a 2 and then the other die should not show a 2 but then it should be multiplied by 3 because there were 3 dies so that is why we get here 75 over 216 so that is 25 times 3 over 216 thus we get 75 over 216 again because we multiply it by 3 because 3 dies can uh, have a pro can, can show can have a probability to show uh, Two. So it could be that the, the it could be that the second die will show a two, and then the other die, the third die will not show a two, or it could be that the first and second die will not show a two, and your third die will show a two. So that is multiplied by three. So at least one of them. Then the other, the other probability is that uh, two dice will show a two. So one over six for the first die. For example, if your first die will show a two, the probability is one over six. Then also your second die will show a 2, so that is another 1 over 6. And then the other die will should not show a 2, it is 5 over 6. And then again, since there were 3 of them, so it could happen in 3 ways. Thus, we have 15 over 216. And then finally, all of the dice will show a 2. So first die is 1 over 6, second die is also 1 over 6, and your third die is also 1 over 6. Thus, the, the, as we simplify, this equal to... 1 over 216 and then finally to compute the probability of having at least one die to show a 2 is that we are going to add all of these probabilities 75 over 216 plus 15 over 216 plus 1 over 216 so that is now your final answer so it might be uh, it could be lengthy solution if you try to use this uh, formula, but I would encourage you again to make use of those statements that, that the probability of event A happening plus the probability of event A not happening is equal to 1. Then you are good to go. Questions so far or clarifications? Okay, so if there is none, thank you for watching and have a good day.